In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, oh God, amen. So today's gospel that we just read was from Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. And we learn from this passage, from Peter's interaction with the Lord Jesus, a little bit about how we can go deeper in our relationship with the Lord and embracing trials. So if we look at the situation that uh, Peter found himself, he was having a rough time. He had just fished all night and he caught nothing. And if anybody has been on a fishing trip before, you know that it takes a lot of preparation. You have to find the bait, you have to figure out what location you're going to go to, you have to prepare the boat, you have to do a lot of things. And so it takes a lot of time and effort. And to come back from a trip that you spend hours to fish and get nothing, it's frustrating, it's annoying. And in that time, that was his career. He was a fisherman. So when he comes back with nothing, that means he didn't earn a living that day. He goes home with no money, no food, no nothing. And then on top of that, as the morning starts and he's trying to clear his nets and uh, tidy up the boat from the trip, he finds Jesus in his boat. And at that time it was early. Peter did not know much about Jesus. He knew him as a preacher. He knew him as a lot of people were following him. And he knew that he would give a lot of sermons to people, and people were curious and interested. So the fact that Jesus was on his boat meant that he couldn't go home. He had to stay a while and wait for Jesus to finish so that he could finish up whatever he needed to do on his boat. So he had a long night, was very tired, annoyed, and frustrated. And then he finds Jesus giving him advice on how to fish. So here you have an expert fisherman in Peter, and you have a carpenter in Jesus giving an expert fisherman advice on how to fish. So imagine how Peter feels. Again, he doesn't know Jesus very well. He's just seen him maybe a few times. So he's already annoyed, and somebody is giving him advice on how to do his job better. I'm sure we've all had days that are rough, that are frustrating, where things are not going the way we planned, and then we find somebody who wants to help and give us advice, and how are we going to take that advice when we're in that situation? Well, let's see what Peter's response was. Peter actually found patience in himself, even though this hardship situation to respond to Jesus in a very respectful manner. He says, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. So even though he's frustrated and annoyed and Jesus is telling him pretty much how to do his job, he's willing to give it another chance. It's not a logical situation, right? Most fishermen don't go out during the daytime. They go out very early before the sun rises. But yet, Peter is willing to give it a try. And we see here that he's giving up control. He's not using his knowledge or his expertise or his past experience to say, well, let me question this advice or why are you giving me this advice I know better. He's giving up control to the Lord and seeing where that will take him. And he uses this big word, nevertheless. And I think that is very insightful because it shows that even with my knowledge and what I know tells me not to do this, nevertheless, going against all odds, in spite of the logic and the common sense that I know from my experience and my knowledge, I'm going to submit to the Lord. And this opens up a big door of opportunity for Peter. By just submitting and obeying to God, it opens up a great opportunity for him. And we see that Jesus, in his heavenly wisdom, has a big plan for Peter. This is the second time, actually, that Jesus approaches Peter and tells him to follow him. If we look in the Gospel of St. Mark, it shows the very first time when Peter and Andrew were together, and the Lord approaches them and says, follow me. And this 
event from the, today's gospel happens after that. So clearly Jesus wants to take Peter into a deeper relationship with him and have a special place in his heart. And he wants to change the frustrations that Peter has in his daily life into joy. His message today for Peter was, I'm going to convert you from a fisherman to a fisher of men. So from a basic routine task of just going out to fish and get some, some fish in the net and give it to the marketplace or eat from it, to going out to save souls and to help others. It's a huge task, a very big, important thing that the Lord is entrusting Peter in. So we can learn from the way Peter handled this trial and this situation to also deal with trials that come in our life. And I wanted to share with you three things that we can learn from Peter. The first one is to know God is in control. There's a verse in Lamentations chapter 3 that says, Who speaks and it comes to pass without the Lord's command? And what this tells us is, nothing in this world will ever happen unless the Lord allows it to happen. The Lord is in control of everything and everyone. And He will not allow anything to happen unless He allows it. So we have to remember that. No matter how tough a hardship is that we're going through, or how unfair a situation in our life may be, or something that we hear in the news that may seem so rough and so tough, God allowed that to happen for a reason. And we may not know the reason at this time, or even ever. But that's the difference between us and our limited capability and God the Almighty, who knows and understands everything. And to follow that, in Romans 8.28, the Bible tells us that all things work together for good to those who love God. So we must also trust and believe this, that nothing can happen unless God allows it, and if God allows it, it's for good. Something good will come out of it. Now I'm not saying that God is here to solve all our problems. That's not what this is saying. We have to be careful to understand this. God is not going to solve all of our problems in life. But, rest assured, He will bring something good out of every problem we face. So the problem is for our good. And if we put that mindset on when we approach a problem or a trial, then we will find that good. And we will gain blessings and benefits spiritually. The second tip on how to embrace trials is to obey God joyfully and unconditionally. We cannot say, okay God, I will obey you when it sounds good to me, or if it's something tough or too difficult, then I don't think I can obey you. We must obey God unconditionally and joyfully. We cannot be bitter about our obedience and say, fine God, you want me to fast, I will fast. You want me to go to church? Okay, I'm going to go to church, but I'm not happy about it. That's not obeying unconditionally and joyfully. And we hear a lot from the Catholic Epistle and the Pauline Epistle today about the sources of fights and wars in our life. And they tend to come from the times when we're bitter, when we obey with bitterness, or when we disobey the Lord. So we have to be careful not to fall into those traps. The other element about obeying God unconditionally and joyfully is that we're not seeking our personal gain. Right? We can't say, okay, I'll obey you if I can do this, or if you give me this in return. We're not looking for personal gain when we obey the Lord. And we also shouldn't have to understand everything that we do. That's what faith is about. It's about obedience without necessarily fully understanding. We cannot compare ourselves and our knowledge to God's knowledge. So it's okay sometimes to obey the Lord without fully understanding. We ask Him to give us the understanding, but we don't always 
wait to have a full understanding of things before we're willing to obey. And if we look back at the story, going deep with the Lord sometimes means going against our routine or logic or our personal experience and the things of this world, right? We saw in the story that Peter, who's an expert fisherman who knows the right time to fish and how to prepare to fish, came up empty. And yet when he obeyed the Lord's command, the nets were overflowing with fish, even though that wasn't necessarily the best time to go fishing. So sometimes obeying the Lord may mean we have to put away what we think is logic and common sense. And the last tip for us in embracing trials is to pray for wisdom to grow spiritually. We must hear God's message that He has for us in the trial we are going through. And we have to realize that the goal when we pray is not to ask God to take the trial away, to have it end right away. That's what the people of the world ask for in their prayers. I don't want to have any hardships. I don't want to have a tough life. I want it to be smooth and easy. But we as Christians, we have to realize that the trials are for our benefit. It's a spiritual blessing for us. So in our prayers, we're not asking the Lord to take this trial away from us. We're asking the Lord for wisdom to get through the trial, to know what is the message for us in this trial that the Lord has to allow us to grow. And I refer to James chapter 1 verse 2 here because it relates very well. It says, Count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. So we should be joyful when we go through trials. It doesn't make sense from a worldly perspective, right? Because the people of the world, and as we live in this world, we want to have pleasures and comfort. But if our true goal is to be with the Lord and to get closer to Him, we have to endure trials joyfully because it builds our character. So the key message for us today is we need to find a way to go deep in our spiritual relationship with the Lord and not to stay at the shore. If you look, there were multitudes sitting at the shore watching this miracle of Peter and his fellow fishermen capturing so many fish. But that was just like a show. It was entertainment for these people. It didn't affect them deep down inside. It didn't give them spiritual motivation to develop a relationship with the Lord. They were just bystanders, the multitude sitting there as a big group watching. We don't want to find ourselves in that situation where we're just kind of watching as one of the big group and not being touched as an individual by the Lord. And there's a lot of parallels to when we come to church. Look how many people are here with us today in the church. Are we going to stand as one of the group, just watching the liturgy and what's going on in front of us? Or are we going to try and seek the Lord and go deep and find the Lord deep in a personal way? That is the challenge for each and every one of us. And not just when we come to church, but whatever kind of spiritual activity we're doing. We shouldn't be bystanders just watching people serve or watching the church when they sponsor activities. We all have a part to play. We all have talents. So whatever the talent is that we have, we should contribute. We should help. If there's a church banquet, we should be willing to find a way to help in the banquet and not just say, okay, I'm going to pay my ticket and I'm going to show up and I'm going to be entertained. I'm going to have a nice dinner, there's a choir, whatever activities they have, and I'm just going to sit back and watch. That's like being like the multitudes on the shore. We need to be like Peter and find a personal relationship with the Lord through every service and activity that's available to us. And I refer to Psalm 34, verse 8, that says, Taste and see the Lord is good. Because when you taste that sweetness of the Lord, you'll never go back to being a bystander. 
to being so passive. You're going to always be active. You're going to want to taste more of his sweetness. So in summary, when we deal with trials, we can look at the letters of the word trial to remind us of some of the key points. The T is trust in the Lord. The R is relinquish control to God. The I is involve God, involve Him in our problems. And the A is accept God's will. If we involve Him, we must accept the will that He has for us. And L is lean on Jesus. And there's a beautiful verse in Proverbs that summarizes this in three, chapter 3, verse 5. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. So we pray together that the Lord gives us opportunity to go deep in our relationship with Him and to embrace whatever trials that we may face because we then know that the Lord will be there to get us through it 